Hi, third graders. Um, I am Mrs. Melindy. I am going to be reading to you one of our Sequoia books for this year, and it is called One Third Nerd. It is by Jennifer Koldinko, illustrated by Elegantine Kulmans. One Third Nerd. Okay, so this book has 24 chapters. So I'm gonna do this in several different videos and we'll listen to a couple chapters here and there so that you can get one of your Sequoia books accomplished. Okay, chapter one, pee in the fridge. Oh my goodness. Fifth grade is not for amateurs. You have to watch yourself. Kids notice stuff. What books you read, what sports you follow, what devices you own, and how nerdy you are. A little nerdy is good. You can fix the game controller. But if you're the kid who gets the teacher's website up and running so everyone has more homework, that's too nerdy. And then there are the sub subtle things, like how you raise your hand, should you raise it high and eager, low and mouse-like, Rotate your palm, flap it all around, or does your arm come up straight and slow like a log on a pulley? Same with turning your homework in. Do you put it on the top of the pile or on the bottom? Do you fold it like a paper airplane and fly it to your teacher's desk? Do you deliver it by drone? Or do you send it up in the classroom aisle in the mouth of a robotic device? I could probably manage all this okay if it weren't for my sisters. Dakota, the third grader, is the worst. I finally get up the courage to talk to the girl everyone thinks is cute, and Dakota shouts across the playground, Liam, I need toilet paper from the boys' bathroom. There's none in the girls. Izzy, the second grader, is a hugger. The custodian, the crossing guard, my coach, Iggy, Izzy hugs everyone. Unfortunately, my sisters and I look alike. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and on the short side, so I can't hide the fact that I am their brother. Then there's our dog, Cupcake, a black and tan German Shepherd with crooked teeth and shiny black lips. Cupcake has little accidents in our apartment. Did I mention we live underneath the landlord? Not that poor peak control would be a good idea in any house, but it's especially bad when you live close to your landlord. Other problems? Cupcake howls when the microwave dings and Izzy sings all the time. Luckily, the landlord, Mr. Torps, is hard of hearing. Once he takes his hearing aids out, Izzy can sing as much as she wants. How do we know they're out? He turns his TV up so it's a he turns his TV up so loud it's like the voice of our principal booming from the PA system at our school. We hear every sound Torps makes, when he belches, shouts the radio, or goes to the toilet. Plus, he spies on us. He says he only comes downstairs to water the plants, right outside his window, but since there's nothing to water but dried up weeds, I kind of wonder. So I don't bring friends to our apartment. I don't tell people where I live. I don't even write my address on the forms at school. The only person who knows the truth is my best friend, Dodge, and he won't tell anyone. Dodge comes over every day. His grandpa, Crash, watches us if my mom has to work late. Some days, Crash can't get out of work either, and then I'm the one in charge for a little while. I don't see Crash's car, so I'm guessing today will be one of those days. Dodge, Dakota, and I walk from the bus stop. We climb down the steep stairs to our apartment, careful to avoid the rotted wood steps that sink when you step on them. I pull the blue key with a smiley face sticker out from underneath my shirt, where it hangs on a string, and I unlock the door. Inside, I open the patio slider to let Cupcake in. She is crazy excited to see me jumping all around. I follow Dodge the, to the tiny kitchen. Dodge finds the crackers, and he's about to wash them down with lemonade. He squints at the glass. Did your mom buy a new brand? I catch a whiff and then snatch his glass out of his hand. It smells like pee! Sorry, uh, I run to the bathroom. I dump it and I hurry back to pour him some actual lemonade in a glass. Who would put a glass of pee in the fridge? Dakota! 
Dakota has been working on the problem of why Cupcake has lost his pee control. She never had a problem until a few months ago. We house broke her when she was a little dog. She learned so quickly what a smart, cute puppy she was. She had the softest fur, floppy ears, and giant paws, and she made funny groaning sounds, like a dog's version of a purr. The week after my parents split up, Mom got us Cupcake. The first night we had her, she chewed off the top of a tubware container and wolfed down the cupcakes inside of it. That's how she got her name. When we lived in our old house, there was a yard for Cupcake, but in January, Mom and Dad sold our house and we rented this place. Now the yard is a tiny patio with one plant trying hard to grow out of a crack in the cement. When it produces a leaf, Cupcake pees on it and then it flops over again. My job is walking Cupcake. Mom won't let Dakota or Izzy walk her because it isn't safe in our neighborhood. But I never worry. Cupcake is the world's best watchdog. Once a bodybuilder in a camouflage vest walked too close to me and Cupcake, and then Cupcake growled. Now when, he's, now when that guy sees me, he runs to the other side of the street. I never feel short when I walk Cupcake, though I do wish we would have named her something more ferocious like Dude or Brute. Look, um, I'm sorry about the lemonade, I mumbled to Dodge when we were out on the street. Dodge shrugs. That's Dodge for ya. He rolls with everything. We take turns on the skateboard, hanging onto Cupcake's harness so she'll haul us up the hill. Then we start talking about what happened in class. Can you believe Moses got in leadership already? He's been here, what, three weeks, I say? Leadership is kind of like student council. Only the teachers choose who will be on it. I like it. It makes me feel important. Dodge was in leadership, but he doesn't want to have to talk that much, so he got out of it. Moses is nice, Dodge says. I throw the tennis ball for Cupcake, then I jump back on my board. Have you seen him play? He's got a killer serve, and his overhead smash bounces over the fence. Dodge nods. I heard he's on two tennis teams, ours and another at some club. A club? So he's rich too? I sigh. One third nerd, one third athlete, one third rich kid. Moses has it all. Like, what's his name? The guy who started Facebook? Uh, Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah, him. Super nerd. Genius. Is he good at sports? Has to be, I say. There are sports everywhere on Facebook, so who would you rather be? Mark Z Zuckerberg or Roger Furterer? Roger Furterer is the world's best tennis player. We love him because he always wins without ever sweating or grunting or yanking at his underwear. I have a life-size cardboard of Roger in my room. Every month I measure my height against his. Just 22 inches to go. Roger, huh? Dodge says. I roll the board to Dodge. Do you think Moses is better than Roger when he was our age? Dodge shrugs. Dodge and I are both on the tennis team. Dodge likes to play, but not as much as I do. I don't ask him what I really want to know. Am I as good as Roger when he was my age? And what would happen if I played Moses? Would I get crushed or would he? This kind of stuff doesn't matter to Dodge. I don't know why it matters to me so much. The end of chapter one.